Hey, Budge Camison, and today, oops, are we streaming? Here we go. All right, Fiberistas, hey, welcome to the live stream. Yay! All right, so normally I stream on Sunday, and today, um, and I had to, uh, I went to a local spin-in. So now, so I decided to do it on Wednesday, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be catching the replay, and that's fine. So anyway, so today what I'm going to share with you is just some live weaving. Um, and I hope the setup is going to work. And today you're also getting me with no makeup, and <laughs> I just threw some lunch down. So if I got anything in my teeth, pop it into the chat room and let me know, and I'll deal with it. So anyway, um, so what I'm going to be working on today um, is a dress to go with this piece. So I made this piece. It's ceramic, and I've designed it to where the dress will will drop down from here and it's going to be a woven piece and it's going to be somewhat long I'll show you um, I wove this piece here you can see it's got some that's the that's the edge that I'll I'll tuck those um, so those these ends down this way and and then I'm gonna leave this kind of this you know sad Charlie Brown Christmas ends here so anyway so what I'm going to to do is um, since I want it to be about this long and I, I I can't show you on screen it's gonna be it's pretty long so the dress fits over her like this here and then it's pretty long so I want this but this isn't the dress for this one um, what I'm going to work on is this, you can see from here, this off-white warp, um, and it's going to be something um, made to look almost like a wedding dress, but I want it to be this long. All right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is measure this, because once this starts to wind on here, I'm not going to be able to gauge how long this is, and so the way to do that is I take my little bit of yarn doo, doo, doo. and I measure the length just with this little piece of yarn here so it's gonna be about yay big All right? and I'm going to break that here and I'm gonna kinda tuck it in to this end here alright so alright uh, all right. so as you can see in here, all right, I wanted to, you know, normally I I start off with a little bit of toilet paper here to spread out that warp. Uh, not not this time. I'm going to want it to, to just be no hem stitching, just to kind of um, put some yarn in there that's going to just be just hanging out like that. So... Norm, like I said, normally I put some toilet paper on there, and I'm just not going to do that this time. I'm just going to put this. This is just an empty tube from uh, paper towels that I cut. And this is something I learned in that weaving class. And I'm going to cover up these ends. And let me, you know what, let me switch the camera. I'm just jumping right in today. All right. Let me switch the camera to board and me. All right, so here you have it. And I apologize for this glare. Um, all of a sudden, it got a little cloudy out, and so this is kind of the better way to show what's going on. All right, I'm going to put this somewhere relatively safe. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so I'm going to put this this tube to cover up those knotted ends here and that's going to make like a smoother surface for the for that weaving part so all right and then I'm going to so this is going to as I as I weave this is going to be my general measure for <clears throat> for what 
for how long I want to make this piece. I, I have on here a lot of warp. I've got probably, I don't know, probably four yards of warp on here. So if I mess up, I can just make another one and just, or just if I'm not sure, if I want to try something else, I can make a couple of them in the side. Or if it, I, you know, really am pleased with the first or second one, then I'll have enough warp to work on something else. So, all right. Um, a little bit about what I'm working with. So since, like I said, this is supposed to be a kind of a wedding dress um, idea. And I, I looked for my uh, sketchbook that had that picture in it. And I just did not see it. So, um, but I'll post a picture. I have a picture of it somewhere, so I'll post a picture in the show notes of, of what I was uh, thinking this was going to look like. All right. So I've only gathered my white and off-white yarns. So, and I've got, and I'm using two. My, I have a boat shuttle um, that I've been using. And so I've wound on you know, a bunch of different little threads. Now normally, too, I use these tongue depressors that you can get at the craft store for next to nothing. And those work well. So I've got several little yarns. And look at this. Check this out, y'all. So rather than getting a bunch of bobbins um, from uh, for the that go with that boat shuttle, and it's not that those bobbins are terribly expensive, but I've been using, look at this. These are bubble tea straws. And you can get a pack of like a gazillion at the Asian grocery store for next to nothing. And I just cut them down the size and and these fit on the Sayori, um, the Sayori bobbin winder. So I don't know. I don't know that they would fit on a regular one. I think the regular ones don't have that spring load that that butts up against the tube, but the Sayori one does have like a little spring load that kind of holds these in place. So that's what I've been using for for cheap o bobbins. And so now I have a gazillion of them. All right, so I've got a lot of different kinds of, of yarn, but they're all in that same kind of white, off-white theme. I've got a mohair, and this is a silk, and this is a hand-spun two-ply. Uh, I've got a little bit of novelty yarn with a little glitz in it, and lots of little hand-spun singles. I also have a little bit of sari silk. Then I'm going to try and incorporate into there. I've got my um, loom waist from when I was warping this piece, this uh, loom. Uh, more of these little, oh, that doesn't belong in there, these little hand spun singles. I've got this silk kind of lace weight. It's like a silken linen, I think lace weight and I also have just a sock yarn that has just a touch of color in it. All right, I also have, which is gonna add, um, make out the, the, the most wow part of the dress, is a lot of this uh, lace. Now I got these lace remnants at, at a thrift store. So this is, this is what I got. So, like I said, I'm going to start off with something I want to, uh, so this is going to be the bottom part of the dress. So that means that I'm going to want the lace down here. So I'm going to start off with, uh, let me check and see. It looks like I might be frozen. Am I frozen? No. Okay, good. Um, all right, so I'm going to start off so this is the bottom part of the dress. So that means that I'm going to want that lace bit to be down here, but I'm also going to need something to hold it in. Uh, so I'm going to start, eh, let's see, I'm going to start probably with, I'm going to start, start with the sock yarn because I want something relatively sturdy, but it's also going to be that part that's going to, um, that's going to be really loose, but I, w I do want it to, well, you know what? No, I'm not going to start with this. I'm going to start with the wool. 
because this kind of wool here um, has a lot of grab to it and so if I'm gonna weave this area here without doing a hem stitch but I don't want it to necessarily totally fall apart then I'm gonna want this yarn to have a little bit of grab all right and I don't want to weave this in but I'm just gonna be as I weave along I'm just gonna be doing that measurement so there you have it. All right, so let's get started. Oh, I've got this warped a little tight. And I'm at this angle so I can try and share with you guys. There's no sound. Okay. No sound. Let me double check. Oh, my sound is fine. Okay. <laughs> check your settings. My sound is fine. No sound. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, how about, let me see if I can see on here. So I can try and share with you. I've got sound on my end. Is there, yeah, Vicki, it might be on yours. There's sound. Okay. All right. Yeah, Vicki, you might want to check your settings because I, I, the sound seems to be okay on this end. So... Um, and, and it might be that you might need to reload, um, just uh, reload the, the YouTube channel. Maybe that'll help. All right. So I am starting with the sticky wool. And I'm just going to pull this through. And again, I'm going to leave... And it's also going to try and spread out that that warp a little bit, hopefully. And then I tuck this end in here, like this. Alright. Tuck that end in. And then I'm just going to do a couple rows of this because then I'm going to move on to that lace lace bit. But I just want to make sure because this is that area that's not going to be hem stitched in. But it's definitely, I definitely need a little base so that lace doesn't fall out. So if you have any questions, give a holler, because this is going <laughs> to... Watching someone weave is a little on the slow side, and if you've watched any of my other videos, I was able to jump ahead. So weaving live is going to be a little on the slow side. I love your idea of weaving with the clay toppers. Do you ever sell them? I thought of using wood or cardboard, but fire clay would probably hold up outdoors. Yeah, you're right. Clay would hold up outdoors. I haven't sold them. I just started making them, and... My goal is to have a body of work um, of about 25. So once I get those, then I would definitely consider selling them. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you could use that would hold up outdoors. Huh. I have to think about that for a minute. I'm wondering if... Uh, I mean, if you don't have access to a, a ceramic kiln, which I know if it wasn't for this community center, I certainly wouldn't. Um, I'll have to think on that a minute. Because it seems like if you can find some kind of um, some kind of flat piece and then you could dremel some holes in, that might work. Hmm. Let me think about that, too. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, so I'm going to do just a couple more rows of this because I think I just want to be safe as opposed to sorry, right? Do you ever sell your yarn? I can't find any for sale on your website. You know, I used to sell my yarn. <laughs> and when we moved, I stopped. I closed down the shop for the move and then just never opened it back up. 
because I started going um, to the art center and, and focusing on working on some art and I had stopped doing the yarn shows a while ago uh, so but that's not to say that I would not consider selling some yarn I mean I've got a lot of stash um, but that it, you know getting that set up again would take a bit of time and I'm kind of trying to focus on getting the body of work together um, because I'm that's kind of the direction I want to go in so but if I do if I, I I know I'm so sorry Carol if I do start to sell my yarn again um the newsletter people would be the first to hear about it and it would probably be like a limited edition flash sale type of thing um because it's not something I want to do on the regular but definitely it would be something you know just once once in a while uh, type of thing all right I'm gonna stop because I think that's going to be enough for, for that little bit to hold that the lace in. All right, so let me oops, go down. I'm tucking this end in. But yeah, if you're not on my newsletter list already, then get on the newsletter list because they will be the first to hear about it. All right, so I'm going to take some of this lace. And this piece would hang down about like that. Do I want to do that? Let's see. Seems like I had another piece that was, let's, that one's shorter. Let's go with the longer piece. All right. So I'm just going to take this, this here. I uh, probably shouldn't have cut that little bit out. Oh well. All right. And that in there so now to lock that in I'm gonna want to do a couple of rows of just plain and I'm gonna use this this kind of sock yarn here so let me get get that in there yay you know what I saw um I saw a piece where somebody did something very similar where they took this you know this kind of rigid heddle um, weaving and they just did a bunch of, of fabric and so it turned it into kind of like a boa so you could totally do that take some upcycled fabric and and do like this and then do a couple rows of plain and and just do rows of fabric and that would make a really really cool um, boa type of scarf but I'm just going to do a little bit at the bottom to kind of make it like uh, those uh, mermaid style dresses, wedding dresses that are so popular. I'll do a couple more rows just to lock that in. Ooh, you've thought of using paper clay but not for outdoors. Yeah, I know. Paper clay for outdoors would be bad. And I'm not sure if even, um, what's that called? The, um, the air dried clay. I don't think that's outdoor safe either. Um, I'm wondering if you could do something with cement. I mean, I know that's kind of over the top, but if you got like a really fine cement and that would be kind of heavy, <laughs> but if you get a fine cement and did like thin, I mean, you could try, you could give that a whirl and then do something, you know, to, um, for the, the holes, like maybe, you know, stick some straws or some dowels or something in there. This is the same way I would do funky stuff with your knitting, just picking up and knitting with your main yarn and then hanging out the sides. Yes. So yeah, pretty much. So I'm just, I'm just yeah just letting it hang out the sides except for and this is just going to be for the the bottom part um because i want this to mimic i want that to mimic a, a dress i'm going to pick a stiffer yeah now this is like this is like somebody's curtains <laughs> so i'm going to put a couple of stiff but i don't think i want it that long i want it maybe that long all right let me cut this
piece in there. And you see, I didn't cut this because I'm just going to run this along the back and and then weave another couple of rows of that again. All right. Oh, so, oh, so, oh, my husband's home <laughs> and the dog's going nuts. Hold on, I'm going to let the dog out. Sorry about that. He's such a drama king. <laughs> oh, the drama. Oh my goodness. Somebody's here. Who could it be? It's, it's only the mister. All right. Would you drop the main yarn? Is this the same as with the funky stuff in you by picking up and knitting with the main yarn and letting it hang out on the sides? Would you drop the main yarn? Would I drop the main yarn? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by dropping the main yarn. Uh, dropping the main yarn. See, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of putting it on the side so I can go back and lock in with this. Does that answer your question? I feel like I'm not answering your question. Oh, all right. Do a couple more rows of that to lock that in. Oh, <coughs> mm, excuse me. Goodness. All right. I've seen the cement thing done where they soak a cloth with thin cement, then drape the cloth over something to harden into the shape. Those are made for outdoors. So you can try. Some. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, I could totally see something like that working. If you, uh, if you did it, you could even do it like over a wood or cardboard form. Or for that matter, thank you. <laughs> for that matter, I'm wondering, uh, Carol said bless you. I'm saying thank you to that. For that matter, I'm wondering if you could just, even like some weathered wood, you know, where you paint it and then you let it weather and then cut some, uh, you know, drill some holes in that in that wood. You could do something very similar to a, a a wood panel that way. Something called hypertufa. Yes, hypertufa, because that would be of sand and vermiculite. That would be way awesome. You could totally do that. Oh, keep me informed. Keep me up to date on how that that looks. I don't know if you're in the collective or not, um, but that is definitely some good inspiration for the collective if you're if you're into it. That sounds like a great idea. See, I love the hive mind. I love the hive mind. All right. That's why I like the collective because you can bounce ideas like that, right? Okay. So, here we go. Oh, also, if you guys are watching on on your phone and you're wondering why you can't see the chat, it's because you need to be using the app on your phone and that's going to pop up the chat because we found out the hard way that uh, if you're going through the your web browser on your phone that that's not that's you're not able to participate in the chat well, that's an interesting piece now look at that that's kind of uneven and weird I kind of like that all right I'm going to put that one in next and I think I'm going to have to advance the warp in a minute Cool, Kathy. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep us posted on how that works out. I definitely, definitely would love to see that. I bet that's going to be so insanely cool. I mean, you could even do something really interesting, like with the hypertufa. Um, just so sculptural, right? I mean, really sculptural. That would be. Oh, that would be so cool. All right. So, you know, I'm looking at this. This. This is looking like it's getting a little, I mean, I didn't, I think I, I thought I would be doing more than three rows of lace, but three rows might be it. I don't know. All right, let's see. So if I'm measuring this and taking it up here, you know, let me start it from here. 
if I'm measuring from here and taking it up, oh, I've got room. Okay, we'll keep working. I've seen leaves made with it. Yes. You know, as a matter of fact, there's a book <laughs> that's right here. Hold on, let me show you. Uh, oh, where is it? I know my book's right here. I, you know, I used to work at uh, Lark, and we did, and we worked on craft books. And this is one of the books that I worked on. This is a book I designed. It's called Creative Ornaments for the Garden. Anyway, and uh, I was the art director for that book, and that has a lot of, of ways to use concrete sculpturally. So you might be able to find that in your library. Um, so give it a check out. I can put in the notes too um, the, the inf more information on that book, um, uh, like the, the author and the name and ISB number, and you can do some research on that. Okay, I'm going to have to advance this work. Yeah, there's a Yeah, that garden. So so if you're doing some pieces for the garden, what kind of what kind of of yarn would you be using? Would you be using wool yarn or are you looking at are you looking at uh Maybe using some natural stuff. All right, I gotta advance this. I can't get this in there. Yeah, this book is. Let me show you some. The, there's some couple of pieces in this book. There are things like, uh, and they used a lot of that, that hypertufa type stuff. But she also did like where you do forms. Let me see if I can find. spend all the time flipping through this book yeah here's some stuff like where she's even you know cut some stuff out of styrofoam and then made like this slurry of of concrete and s put the slurry on top and that seals in that styrofoam and that makes makes it like outdoor stuff she had all kinds of great techniques Oh, I'm advancing this work. What am I doing? All right. I <laughs> see I'm getting distracted. I don't mean to get distracted. Okay. So I'm advancing. And here's the, th the trick, though. When you got all this stuff going on here, walls and natural love that would hold up well in a while. And if it got too bad, I'd just redo it. Yeah, that, that sounds cool. I think that would be really cool. All right, that's the only thing is when you have this stuff on the side, it's just a hot mess to, to wind that on. Oh, this is stuck. All right. Let me just do the best that I can. Let's see if I can get that to... Yeah, this probably would have been better on my bigger... Uh, my bigger loom. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that would be cool if you had like a, a piece. Um, if you had a, a piece that that you could even you know as things wore out and wore off that you could go back in with a tapestry needle and add new stuff and it would just be in an evolving piece. That would be really cool. The planner is by Sherry Warner Hunter. Looks like the same cover you showed us. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, creative concrete ornaments for the garden. That is it. Sherry Warner. Um, that's exactly it. So yeah, I I, I designed this book. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, she's she's out of Nashville, I think. And she's got some really beautiful, like, public pieces out. She does a lot of, like, concrete-y, mosaic-y type stuff, which is really cool.
or maybe I'm confusing that with a mosaic book. They all run together. All right. All the projects that I worked on back then. Good old Amazon. Yeah, right. Oh, well, good. So does that mean that the book is still is still available and in print? Oh, look at here. I want to show you guys this. So for this, you know, normally on a lot of weaving, I um, this yarn, this warp yarn, you can see it has all these different textures, but it was a yarn that I had gotten from Deborah Lampert, and she had taken a bunch of different yarns and tied them together and then made one big yarn that was meant to be a warp, like an art warp. And so, but her stuff is held together just by knots. But for this kind of weaving, when you're doing a lot of different textural type stuff, I just, I just leave the knot. I just let that be part of it. So, Good, it's still available. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So yeah, that book is an awesome book. It's, I think of, of the books that I worked on, that one had some of the most innovative, just approachable ideas. I mean, some really, 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 really cool ideas. Lots of good projects. So it's a good book. It had, it, it had stuff that I wanted to try. All right, I'm going to do, let me see. So if I'm looking at this, now I think I still want that to be a little fuller. So I'm going to still go with some stiff, stiff stuff, but I'm going to, I'm going to cut it a little shorter so it'll poof out a little bit. Let's see how long we go in here. We got this and this and this. Uh, I'm going to let that be about this long. So we've got to go from here to here. Make sure we're about there. Let's see how long that is. Okay, we're going to that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I'm going to cut this here. I think actually I'm going to put these two pieces together through here. My friend made bird baths along that line with the cement and rhubarb leaves, so similar to those leaves. I bought mine back in London in my check bag. Oh, wow. <laughs> back. My friend is in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina. Huh. What part of North Carolina is your friend in? how this fuzzy's kind of showing right here. Can you see that? Yeah, you know, maybe white wasn't the, the most ideal with this crazy lighting today, but I'm hoping that you guys can kind of see what's going on. Alright. So yeah, so you see, I did that. So this stiffer lace that's shorter is going to flare up just a little bit. So that's like five pieces. Okay, I think we're getting it, but let's see. So I've got my yarn here and that's gonna be about yeah I think we're okay I might add some maybe I'll do some sorry silk at this point I don't know I'll just keep keep on keep on keeping on I'll tell you, uh, today, right now my, my studio is just trashed, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, because this is like some pretty pretty big news for me. But today my, my studio was just really trashed, and normally when I warp this, I usually use a warping peg, because uh, that's pretty quick. You warp it and you put it on, and, and I've had some disasters happen when I use a warping board until I took that weaving class and learned how to some tips on keeping your warp from becoming a total hot mess and a disaster. 
So recently, and I'm going to share with you guys, you know what, I'm going to switch over to here for a minute. Whoops, wrong. This one. All right, so, so I, uh, so I used a warping board, but it's a warping board that came with, and you ready? I don't know if you guys can see. I got a loom. You see it? <laughs> right here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. It's a, a I went, um, I got in an estate sale. Um, I saw on Craigslist somebody was having an estate sale and it was listed. And so I went and it was somebody's mom had passed and she was a weaver and the price was really insanely good. And it came with a bench and a warping board and the loom, it was like next to nothing. It had all the stuff. So I got it, but it is the tie-ups were um, leather and they broke. It's a Harrisville design. So the, the tie-ups were leather and they broke and so I had to, I'm waiting on the replacement parts. <laughs> so yeah, it came with a, a really nice warping board and I was able to use the warping board for this warp today to get this warp together. Otherwise it's just going. All right, I'm doing down. So yeah, I'm excited to play with that, but I, like I said, I'm having to do just a little bit of refurbish on it. Nothing terrible. Oh, let me just switch it back. Board and me. All right, nothing too bit, too crazy, but I have to do a little bit of refurb on that, and uh, and and then I'll get to play. But luckily, I guess they they nowadays for the Harrisville they. They make uh, a uh, they make tie ups that are like coated cable. So I'm waiting for that to come in. All right, I think I'm gonna go. Oh, you know what? I wanted to use this. This is a pretty lace. I think that's the same. No, this is different. All right, do I want to do short? No, I want to do longish. Okay. Or do I want to do short and then shorter? Maybe I'll do short and then shorter. Short and then shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cut it in half. Let's go like this. There we go. All right, let's see what we got going on. There we go. I'm put another piece there. I think I'm gonna do these two at the time. This one, cause it's kind of thin. And then that's gonna be it as far as that big fluffy lace. And we'll see how that comes out. I'm gonna take this yarn behind here. Beat that down. And go up. All right. What will you do with this piece? Well, for now, I'm just going to hold on to it. Um, I've got another. I've got another. Um, what do you call it? Uh, another f a clay form that's similar. And my, my idea for this one, for this, is to have a series of them. So they'll be kind of lined up and staggered. So it'll look like a, a crowd of women uh, is what it's going to look like, like a bunch of women. So it's, I want to get at least five of them made at the minimum. More would be better. So we'll see. And once I get that collection together, then I don't know. I think ideally... Um, I, I think ideally I would like to try and see if I could get do uh, to get into a gallery I mean that's where I'm going with this so um, and then I'm gonna create like a couple more bodies of work so it'll because that's almost like a big installation type piece and so I'm gonna uh, 
but that would be somewhere I mean that would be great if I could get like that as an insulation to put in somewhere so that's what I'm going to do with it otherwise I guess it'll just hang in my in my house <laughs> or somebody's house or even parts of it because I totally would sell parts of those separately but I think they will look better when they're in a, in a cluster and, and each one would have like a different dress. I have a bunch of ideas for the different dresses. All right, so from here, I'm going to add some sari silk. Um, it, you know, it's really interesting because white sari silk, um, I know in India, white is, white is for funerals, so I know they were a little hesitant to try and sell me some white sari silk. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let that, and they didn't, they seemed to, it took them a while to pull together the white sari silk. I mean, I had some undyed stuff, but this isn't undyed. This is like remnants of, of some white saris that were made. And you know what, luckily the stuff is tied instead of stitched. And instead of cutting it, I'm just going to tear it apart at the knot here, since the knot is falling in the right place. So this is for a wall piece. Yes. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, this, like I said, this would be, I don't know if you saw this. Yeah, this would be, um, th this is the dress part of this, and this is going to be one of a bunch. So, like I said, I've had the second one down. I'm just going to make a bunch more. Uh, at least five. Um, so we'll see how they go. They take a while to make. And honestly, for the studio, um, they're kind of... I have to... I have to do them on a, a kiln shelf because they're real... They're real apt to break. And so the... The studio manager is kind of, she's worried that she's going to break it. So I have to use a, get a, a special shelf for it because, and that's the biggest I can go unless I start piecing together, um, you know, taking it apart. I could, I mean, and that's possible. I could always, if I wanted to go bigger, I would just have to like, do it in pieces and then put and then piece together you know attach the pieces together which could be a whole other take on the, the the piece of the work of art anyway so but yeah that is far but otherwise that's the biggest I can go and and I have to take real special precautions because it has a lot of you know when it's in the like the um, bone dry stage it's it's super super fragile and and so moving it's kind of it's precarious <laughs> all right i'm liking the way the skirt's coming out it's kind of almost shabby chic right <laughs> all right Yeah, I think with these ends, I'm going to wish I had done this on a, on my bigger loom so there would be room for those ends to just wrap around the, the, the cloth beam. All right, I'm going to do some more sari silk. Keep it about the same length. Um, it wouldn't be gathered, Vicky. I think it it's um, it fits. I made the whole, the width of her body um, just wide enough for it to fit around to the side, so it just would lay flat across the top. Yeah, this is 
not, but I think usually when it's, uh, when it, this is an eight inch loom, but when it comes off the loom, it's more like seven inches. Oh, here's my, where's my, <laughs> I can't even see it. It's way over here. I love all the texture. See all the texture from from this yarn is really popping out here. I really like the way that's turning out. See, sometimes I have to be careful. I I I did this thing where you leave. You have this floating selvage, so I leave yarns on either ends that aren't in the holes of the heddle. And I have to be careful to try and include them into the weaving. You know, sometimes I'm wondering if, if just on a rigid hole you just don't need a floating selvage. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, that works out okay. Am I mumbling? I must be mumbling. Yeah, I'll try to speak up. I'm really bad to mumble, and I don't mean to. All right, I think two rows of that little sorry silk's going to be plenty, because I think what I'm also going to do is this is my loom waist. And I'm going to put some bunches of that loom waste in there before I start working on the smoother part of that dress. So let me do one more row, two more rows. Two more rows of this stuff that's holding this in. Finally made a live cast. Yay, Sarah, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> where are you where are you from, Sarah? I have a feeling, yeah, a lot of um I know my my, my peeps in the in Europe are probably not able to make this. Or maybe they are. I guess up there it's uh almost nine o'clock in in England, maybe? Nine, almost ten? I'm not sure. And then in Australia, I'm not even sure what time it is over in New Zealand or Australia. Uh, let me add a little bit of this furry stuff. I'm, I'm making little bunches of this loom waste to drape across. Install, yeah, I think so. Cause I'm, what I'm trying to do, you know, like the, 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 wedding gowns that are really super fitted and then flare out like at the knees that's that's the look i'm going for it's like that kind of classic mermaidy kind of style wedding gown all right so i'm just going to pull this bunch through see and so this is going to add a whole other texture here advance that warp again Oop. and I don't want it to pull in too much well that would be interesting right uh, where are we here okay yeah I keep I keep trying to check to make sure I get those ends that uh, of the warp included because otherwise then I have this string that floats along the side. I definitely don't want that. Okay. Do you have images of your previously completed? Uh, this, you know, this is the first skirted, the first skirt that I've done. I haven't completed 
I've completed two of the ceramic pieces, but I haven't put the skirts on yet. And this blue, oh, let me get this, this blue piece that I was showing you guys that I used to measure is one of the dresses, but I'm trying to decide if it's too plain. I think the idea for this one is, is to keep it, you know, kind of plain on top and then I have these men's shirt buttons, these tiny little buttons, and I'm going to just sew those on and then, you know, taper down the buttons and sew those across the top. Um, and we'll see how that one turns out. And I've got a couple of other dress ideas um, just interpreted through, through some weaving. And I'm going to make them kind of long because there's something about when they're pretty long that that it keeps it really elegant looking um, so so we'll see but I definitely 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 will post a picture uh, when I have one completed maybe it will be this one and you can say I was there when she was weaving it yay all right we're coming up on an hour I think I'm gonna continue on all right I'm do another bunch of this. Let's see. I've got some of this. Yeah. My warp broke. You know, this, I thought this was going to be the strongest yarn in the warp, and it was the, it snapped. It snapped as I was tying it, tying it on. So I've got a couple of pretty long pieces of this. I like this fuzzy stuff, too. This fuzzy stuff is interesting. And I've got some, there's some loop and more of that fuzzy. Okay. Oh, I want to put some of this cotton in there too. Oh, that's pretty short. No, wait. Oh, no, it's not that short. Okay. Uh, but I think that might be a little long on those sides. And then once I hang it up, if I need to cut it, I'll cut it at that point. All right. Yeah. No. Wait. This is how I want it to go. Yes. You know what? I'm going to advance the warp before I put this in. All right. I'm going to set that aside. And advance that warp. See, this is going to be, that well, could be a problem. I'm just going to let, I mean, just kind of maybe keep it to the sides and try not to let it roll around the top. It'll just have to float out to the sides. All right, where was I? Top? No, it needs to go to the bottom. Yeah. And then I'm putting this in. Yeah, and I've also been weaving on that Structo loom. I know I've showed you guys that. I had to move that to across the way. I had to shorten my table by 30 inches. <laughs> Take two, I had two leaves in it. It was a very, very long old dining room table that belonged to my mother-in-law. And uh, when they downsized their house, she gave me that table. I've been using it as a work table in here. And so I took the leaves out to make room for the big loom. And I had to move the table loom over on top of my sewing cabinet. So 
So, yeah. You know, this, this studio looked gigantic when I first, um, when I first moved here. But once you get your stuff in, it does not feel gigantic. Okay. So I think at this point, I'm going to start doing, doing just the regular, um, weaving on it. And like I said, I've got a lot of more subtle textures for the body. I'm not going to go nuts with anything really. Um, the only thing is, and I don't know if you guys can see this, this is a, let's see, you can see there's a bead on there, that beaded yarn. I'm going to probably save this for the very top. Um, but otherwise I've got all kinds of, I'm just going to start with, oh, I don't know. And I'm going to use this, I'll start with this one, this hand spun here. And I'm going to use my, uh, boat shuttle. Cause I had been using the little stuff, but you know, I still, I got my boat shuttle for my table loom to throw it across and and I and it's actually the perfect size for this loom so I've been using that and it it makes it easy to just change out these little cheapy bobbins that I had showed you guys all right so let's see what are we doing here all right, I'm tucking this end here hmm. I had a Harrisville loom, but my workspace was so cramped, I ended up rarely using it, so I sold it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I feel you. You know, um, I, you know, the thing that I have a, and, and you guys have, may have seen it, I did, uh, uh, in one of my vlogmas, um, one of my, from last fall, my episodes where I, I show um, weaving or, or finishing a scarf. I'm on my drafting table. I have a an old um, an old industrial school drafting table. It's like the the kind of drafting tables we used when I was learning graphic design in college, and this was before we had computers. So it's one of those old drafting tables, and it is taking up a lot of room. It's way it's bigger than the loom. It's huge. But I love it. It's just the best workspace. And especially if I'm doing some art journaling or planning some stuff out, I just have a lot of room to spread out. So that's that's my favorite thing, and I just won't let go of that. My, um, uh, my mentor from 25 years ago gave it to me, and she was a fellow graphic designer and had helped me when I had a freelance business. And she gave it to me, and then she passed away in 2000, 2000, in 2000, yeah. And and I'm just haven't wanted to give it up. But it's it's a great work surface. I love it. So that's taken up a lot of real estate. If I if I got rid of that, I could even have another loom in here. But I don't need another loom. This well, I've got looms looms of plenty for sure. Anyway, yeah, and that's what this is—a Harrisville, a Harrisville design. I, I, you know, at when I took that class, um, my teacher was, was said, um, she said that they're not the, a very sturdy loom. I mean, and and I can see what what she was saying. They're kind of, I mean, I would love like a, a baby wolf or a mighty wolf, but. Oi, that they're expensive. <laughs> Even used the used ones are pretty pricey. I mean, I know relatively speaking they're not pricey, but you know my budget was tiny. Um, but I tell you this, I I like this loom. I like it. I I mean I can't complain. I mean so far I like it. And I watched a YouTube video. Of, uh, they talked about the theory behind the the hanging shafts. And they said the hanging shafts were in case, you know, you come across a snag or a tangle in your warp, that the shafts would, would sway instead of 
snapping the, the so having that give allows room so your warp your warp thread doesn't snap which sounds great to me <laughs> because uh, yeah anyway I know there are ways to fix if your warp thread snaps but I'm new enough to where I don't I would probably freak out oh I'm liking the way this is coming so now that I'm in this plain area you can see the subtleties of the warp are showing up a little bit more. You leave a scarf. It's so fun. Thank you. I, I, it's yeah. You know when I was I've, I've been doing that other that plain scarf on the the table loom and I've had to do it in chunks because it's I get bored. It's and I even found an interesting pattern to use, but it's. You know, it, it produces a, a different kind of thing, but yeah, this is more get get into it. I guess it's similar to Sayori, but Sayori is like a a very specific, specific, specific thing, and teachers have to get certified. And but I definitely think it's in the spirit of Sayori. Freeform. It's like a freeform. It's like freeform knitting or crochet, right? Uh, let's add a little shiny, shall we? Alright, so this is, oh, you know what? I'm going to use this. This is a, a kind of a tape yarn. And I'm going to actually cut this and tuck that, that end in. I like my loom except when I tried to make a rag rug and it traveled every time I beat. No rug loom. Not a, yeah, definitely. I could see that. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I guess as far as looms go, there it's it. The wood seems kind of lightweight, but then again, I don't really, I don't have another loom to compare it to. Well, no, I guess I do. I mean, those mighty wolves, but they seemed lower to the ground, and I don't know. Yeah, I could see where where it wouldn't it wouldn't work for a rug, for sure. Um. What am I doing? All right, I'm switching this out. Yeah, you need something pretty heavy. You know, I was looking at even a counterbalance loom. They had a bunch of counterbalance looms for, like, really, really, really cheap. But, um, it's like tread therapy. Trap therapy? Is it, is it like tread therapy? Oh. <laughs> Yay. Well, good, because, you know, we're going on an hour, I think. Yeah, we're a little over an hour, so I hope that's okay. I usually try to keep my videos a shorter than this, but sometimes you just kind of need to let it be longer. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, counterbalance looms. So they had a bunch of counterbalance looms. But I tell you, this loom, what was so awesome about it is it, it was easy for us to just get in the back of my SUV. And I don't have a gigantic SUV. I have like a Toyota RAV. So it's kind of like a smaller SUV. But this loom fit in there just fine. And, and it was easy for Bruce to get it out of the car just by himself. I mean, it didn't take two people to get it out of the car. So um, the counterbalance looms, though, it you, you would need a truck. I, I would have needed a truck and another person and it was just not going to happen so um but you know what i got this one for about the same that they were that i've seen the counterbalance looms go for so i have a friend who's has a weaving studio and she has a couple of baby wolves and a bigger one and several of those styles i like those babies right oh my gosh you see and that's what i learned on at the at the um Weaver's Guild, the Triangle Weaver's Guild here in, in the Raleigh area, um, they have, and you can actually rent the equipment, and they have some, they have all kinds of looms, actually, but you can rent um, working on a wolf pup or a baby wolf, and that's what we learned on, and it was, those are awesome. Those are just smooth. <laughs> Right? Oh my goodness, I love those. And that's what I would really like, but like I said, those are those are kind of pricey even even used. And one day, maybe one day. We'll see. 
we'll see. But in the meantime, I'm quite pleased with what I've got. I'm even, you know, I'm even really like the table loom because I can see weaving something like this on the table loom and incorporating some four shaft patterns. Um, with all of the whites and natural. Yay! Welcome, Sandy Glass Shack. Um, so yeah, the um, the the wolf. No, what was I saying? Oh, my table loom. I could totally see, you know, warping on my table loom and and I've got like just a little structo. So it's like an old, old loom. I, and I found somewhere where I can get some different heddles because I think the heddles, the holes in the heddles might be smaller than what I want to use it for. But um, the, what am I doing? See, I get distracted. All right, we're good. Um, but I could see doing something kind of like this and incorporating some patterns in there and then a little bit of texture. So that's, that's ideally what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be playing with that. But those, I don't know that they'll necessarily be wall pieces. I don't know, maybe they could be. I'd have to see. Um, they definitely, uh, maybe for the table loom they would be more for wall pieces. But I think on the on this Harrison, this uh, Harrisonville, Harris, Harrisville, Harrisville. I uh, definitely want to do more like shawls and scarves, but in the same style. And maybe even do some fabric and start playing with some garment construction. Now, if I start playing with some garment construction, then we're then we're gonna start working on. I'm gonna start sharing some some of those ways to put stuff together because I know that you ladies might get tired of making just a bunch of scarves and I get it so I think I there's some ideas I have some books of course I have some books you can see all these books behind me <laughs> I have some a couple of these books talk about garment construction for hand woven stuff and and it's true because I mean when you're working with hand wovens now granted if you've been following along in in the um, in the fiber art collective there's a couple of women who are making some insanely beautiful jackets uh, one one woman and I can't remember your name I, I would know it if I saw it written out and she's making these Chanel style jackets with this hand woven fabric and it is to die for um, and then uh, Allison over in in the UK, she's making, she's doing these tapestry weavings on her rigid heddle, um, this tapestry style weavings where the just the colors are just undulating, and she uses her art journals for inspiration, and she's putting together some beautiful beautiful coats that have a little more flow to them, and it just the flow just follows along the same as um, as her fabric, and it's just lovely. So. There's a, like I said, there's several, there's several books, and but the the books that talk about the garment construction, you you kind of are thinking of garment construction a little differently than you would if you were just cutting out fabric and following a pattern. So, and, and not that you couldn't do that with hand woven fabric, but a lot of times um, with hand woven fabric, you want to minimize how much you're going to cut away as waste. Now look at that. Now I wouldn't have thought that this, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to try and lift this up. Can you see that right here? See how it's kind of filling, that tape yarn, I'm really surprised at how much that's filling in. See, because this other, this hand spun yarn has more holes, is more uh, airy, and then this is more solid looking, which I find quite interesting. I didn't expect that. All right, I'm going to switch to, no, you know what, this is too similar. I don't, now, if you've watched my stuff before, you know that I don't like these shapes to be the same size. So I'm going to continue to work on this with this yarn a little more because I want this to be a little longer. But let me check my length. I've got my trusty, wusty yarn that I had. Oh, let's see. When I wound it, it got wound. Okay. So, I've got a little ways to go. 
All right, so this is my measurement yarn that I attached at the beginning of this weaving. All right, yay, a few books, <laughs> right? <laughs> I actually have another box in a closet. Yeah, and I've got a few that are upstairs. But you know what, it's now that I've got this loom, a lot of those books that I have are for four shaft weaving, so I'm, I've been pouring over those. Anyway, while I wait for parts to get here, and I also have uh, some paperwork that I have to get together for my accountant, and I told myself that I wouldn't allow myself to play on this until I got that paperwork done for the accountant, even if my parts get here tomorrow. So I've got to finish that first. Have to, have to, have to. So, because that will make me, otherwise I'll go into this rabbit hole of, of playing on the loom and my accountant will be mad at me. So we can't let that happen still have to do business. Business, business, business. Alright. So I hope this is not getting too boring. I'm probably going to have to cut this off at in about 10ish minutes because I think there's a time limit on the video cast and I don't want this to go terribly 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 too long. So, anyway, but I will keep you guys posted on the progress as I finish this piece. Alright, so now this is this is significantly wider than this. So I'm going to switch to something with a little sparkle in it. Cut this off. And I'm going to go with this because it has a bit of sh you No, know, you know what? That's so shiny. I think I'm going to go with... I have this wee little bit of hand spun here. It's a little two-ply and it's not that th thick. And it has a little Angora in it and Angelina. And this, this yarn is a little left over from when I spun up some yarn for a friend who was getting married. And I spun it up in case she wanted to make a shawl for herself. Because she's also a spinner, weaver, knitter person. And uh, so I gave her this yarn so she could, if she wanted to, she could make a shawl for herself for her wedding. And so I have just this little bit of it left over. Which is interesting because I'm doing a weaving that's supposed to be a wedding dress. Right? Alright. All right, so next week, you know, maybe next week I share with you just how I finish this up. We'll see. Next next uh, live cast I'm going to do on back on Sunday because I think it's easier for people to, to get on on uh, Sunday afternoon, but I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's easier for people on Sunday afternoon. Unless you guys think that this time's a better time. Hit me up. Just let me know. Either leave me a comment or, um, you see my scarf design. I downloaded some of them. You wanted to see my scarf design. I downloaded some of them. Okay. Yeah, share with me. That'd be great. Share it in the, um, in the, if you, are you in, I can't remember. Are you in the Fiber Art Collective? You can watch on my channel. Okay, cool. Yeah, post would, a link to your channel. Can you post a link to your channel in the chat? And, and uh, we'll go check it out. Alright, so yeah. Leave me a comment if you think that this time works better than Sunday. But I have a feeling people are better able to, to watch on Sunday. But if not, then I can switch to Wednesday afternoon. Because that works for me too. So, either way. I'm flexible. 
think I'm not really seeing a lot of that Angelina, but it might be the angle of the light. Let's see. I can't tell. I'm gonna keep weaving this. All right, but you know what? I am going to. You're welcome. Um. So I am gonna sign off. Let me click this over because it's already getting kind of long, and I think. Um, but I will share with you guys um, when I'm done. And, and follow my progress. I'll post on Instagram and Facebook and in the group um, sharing the progress of, of this weaving as I keep, keep weaving on it. So anyway, but thank you guys for sharing. Are there any questions? I'm going to leave a little bit of time for questions. And I know that there's a bit of a lag. Yeah, like a few minute, a uh, few seconds of a lag. So if you have any questions, let me know. I mean, you guys have been really good to ask questions that we've been going on as we've been going along. Um, I like this time. You like this time? Then maybe we can switch to this time. I kind of like this time too, honestly, because on on Wednesday I get the newsletter out anyway. So this kind of makes you know completes out that work day of Wednesday. Um. So I probably, that, that would help. That would be good. Uh, thank you for this. You're welcome. You're welcome. I, 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 thank you for watching. And, and thank you for, for, for participating. Wednesdays are great. Good. Okay. Wednesdays. Then, that, then it's settled. Let's switch it to Wednesdays. Um, all right. So I am going to sign off. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. Because I think I'm trying to I'm trying to gauge. I, you see, when I do this, I watch what you guys are seeing and then what I'm seeing, and try to gauge. Uh, Sue from Indiana. Okay, hi Sue from Indiana. Wednesday works. Wednesday, Wednesday. All right, Wednesday. We're gonna go to Wednesday now. Yay! So then, in, I guess if you're in the newsletter, you'll get the link um, in the morning. But usually, I schedule it out in advance. Um, so so you guys can you know post get the reminders through YouTube but I'll send I'll send it with the newsletter what the link is and then and then I'll send the um, and it will also have information about the replay and I'll put any show notes um, after I sign off um, probably by the in the next couple of days I'll get the show notes together on that uh, blog page for the replay all right. So, yay. Thanks for joining. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for coming and, 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 and weaving with me. And I guess I will, I don't do Facebook, though I love you do other social media. Me too. You know, and I find that YouTube is, um, I mean, it seems like people are able to find, um, the stuff easier on YouTube. And I, I like the YouTube interface better and it also gets is easier found in the search engines, which is a great marketing thing for me. So yay, YouTube. I'm sticking with YouTube. All right, ladies. Um, thanks for joining me. I really, I really appreciate you guys watching and oh camera, this camera. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you guys next Wednesday. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.